thoughts or something. Uh, you, you know what it is. Uh, I really need to sing from the heart for what I believe. Uh, let me do one more verse. No, 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 no. Uh, it's fine. Uh, people like it when I uh, go off script and speak from the heart. Here we go. I'm throwing tax dollars around like I'm a lottery winner. I'll screw McDonald's. I'm eating lobster for dinner. I have private parties with the Hollywood elite. Uh, go ahead uh, and put that shit in a tweet. You don't like what I'm saying. Uh, this is what I'll do. The Indeed of Lay was passed just uh, for you. Uh, 50,000 drones to drop bombs on your head. A few more citizens soon to be dead. Uh, Michelle? I think I may have went a little bit too far that time. Uh hey YouTube, it's me, Mr. Lawless, and I ask that if you've never seen my videos before, ignore the mask. This is a serious video with very serious information that I'm trying to get out to the public. Uh, like this video, because what I'm about to tell you is something you're probably not going to hear anywhere else, and it's very important. I'm about to piss, fit some pieces together for you on Libya. Now, the reason I'm wearing the tie is because Congress has just recently come out and said that they cannot get any facts or information from the administration or the State Department on what happened in Libya with our embassy burning and with uh, Ambassador Stevens being killed and sodomized and a couple Navy steel SEALs being killed. And you think that would be kind of a big deal and Congress within 24 hours would be briefed fully on everything that's going on. But there's Democratic and Republican congressmen now saying, hey, why aren't you telling us what's going on in Libya? It's important. We want to know. And uh, I'll play a little bit of that for you right now. And I want to fill you in on what's going on, the truth about what happened in Libya. And uh, I want to know your feedback at the bottom. But here we go. Let's get into this. Americans are asking the administration for answers. So this is now something that certainly could never be colored as partisan. These are concerned senators and House members who want to see, want to know what's happened. And for some reason, uh, this administration is not coming forth. The Libya embassy burning and the killing of our two Navy SEALs and our ambassador. Basically, what the administration doesn't want you to know is that we supplied Al-Qaeda with weapons to overthrow Gaddafi. Now, if you're not a sheep, you're much aware of this already. Or, if you turn the MSN off and turned on YouTube or the alternative media, then you were aware that we were supplying Al-Qaeda with weapons in Libya to overthrow Gaddafi, but this may be the first time you're hearing it. And if so, uh, there's plenty of information on the web. Just Google it. Mainstream media even did cover it. And uh, here is one such story. America's secret plan to arm Libya's rebels, uh, which was Al-Qaeda. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, they sent our Navy SEALs and our ambassador to Libya on a mission, a CIA mission and a State Department mission to recover weapons that we had given to Al-Qaeda to overthrow Gaddafi because those weapons now could be used against our allies or us. And someone had the good sense to say, hey, you know, these weapons might now be used against us. Duh. Um, so uh, we overthrew Gaddafi, which, you know, probably didn't really make America any more secure, really didn't have a whole lot to do with America. But, um, that's what this is about. Obama doesn't want it to get out in an election year, and he doesn't want people to realize that our government is supplying Al-Qaeda with weapons to overthrow foreign governments. Because if people realize that, they would start scratching their head and saying, hey, wait a minute, the TSA is sticking their hands down my pants because of Al-Qaeda, but yet our government is giving weapons to Al-Qaeda. Not only that, the National uh, Defense Authorization Act makes it a high crime to give any kind of support to Al-Qaeda. And yet our government is giving support to Al-Qaeda. So this is what this is about. And here's some uh, information I'll leave. Everything will be linked on the video. You can click on the video or you can click in the bottom links below to get the information that I'm giving you. Um, so basically the SEALs and our ambassador was over there on a secret mission to recover these weapons. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, because your government has been lying to the media, they've been lying to Congress, and they've been lying to you about why this has happened. They try to make you believe it all had to do with a video. And the truth of the matter is, three days before this happened, Libya security officials warned the United States government that there was going to be an attack on 9-11 on our embassy. In addition to that, the ambassador himself, it now appears, contacted the State Department 
and also was a little concerned about his own safety and they left him there without a security detail or without much of a security detail at all. So that is at least negligence in the very least and you can put your own thoughts on that and comment below. Um, but basically yeah so knowing that they knew there and now it's come out that within 24 hours the government the administration and the state department had a pretty clear picture of what happened in libya but yet remember this you never want a serious crisis to go to waste and what i mean by that it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before you don't want to let a crisis go to waste now do you so they came up with this good plan and i actually put forth that they probably hatched this plan within the three days that they were warned about Libya because they seem to have this thing together awfully quick. This excuse that it was the video's fault. Uh, our free speech somehow caused them to riot, burn our embassy, and kill our ambassador, who now it appears wasn't at the embassy. He was, nor was it a safe house. They said it was a safe house. It wasn't even a safe house. It's just some house in Libya. Uh, you know, a video caused that. An American citizen's free speech calls that to happen. That was That's what they want you to believe. But that's only because you don't want to let this crisis go to waste. This is a crisis. So they have to exploit it somehow and get something they want out of it. So, here we go. For two weeks, this is what the administration told everyone. Even now, though now it's come out, they knew within 24 hours what the truth was. This is what they told Congress. This is what they told the media. This is what they told the people. And here we go. Obviously, the administration, not to the American people. It is in response to a video. A f assessment we have today is that, in fact, this was not a pre-planned, premeditated uh, attack. That what happened initially was that it was a spontaneous uh, reaction to what had just transpired in Cairo uh, as a consequence of the video. To us, to me personally, this video is disgusting. And is a crude and disgusting video sparked outrage throughout the Muslim world. Now, if you want to know the truth about the video, because there's a whole backstory of this video that you haven't been told, and uh, the journalists, you know, the MSM, they're not really doing their job in investigating this video thoroughly. Yeah, you know, they're going right after the patsy that's been thrown to them. If you want to know the truth about at least who the patsy is, and if you want to know the truth about uh, <clears throat> basically how this video was pushed to the forefront all of a sudden even though it was out there for two months and nobody even heard of it and then all of a sudden this video gets pushed to the forefront my good buddy Montagraph has actually done quite quite a thorough investigation on the video and I suggest you go over and watch his investigation on the video very interesting very eye-opening very insightful so now we know that the administration and the State Department have been lying to all of us about why this happened of course they don't want to let a good crisis go to waste and believe me this is a pretty good crisis so it was because them supplying rebels that this happened then they sent our guys back over there to get the weapons back and i would say that al-qaeda just didn't want to give the weapons back if i had to, if i had to guess they were probably like you know these are pretty cool weapons we can do a lot of damage with these i think we'll keep them uh, so that's that. They don't want the citizenry to know that they're supplying Al-Qaeda with weaponry uh, because they're telling the citizens that you're bad and if you talk to Al-Qaeda then we may just drone strike and kill you. Even though we're supplying them with weapons and the TSA is sticking their fingers up your butt because of Al-Qaeda. Because Al-Qaeda might be in your butt. Okay, side issue, but all connected. Now, just a few days ago, a couple of things happened that's very interesting. I'm sorry, one thing that happened between Libya and the, the embassy burning in Libya, and now within just the last couple of weeks, is the guy that was responsible for killing Gaddafi has been killed. Now, why is that interesting? Well, that's interesting because he was probably on the inside. He, is, he was an assassin, and uh, he probably knew some things, and so they're just tying up some loose ends, and they got rid of him. What did he know? I don't know what he knew, but he's dead now. So, there you go. Second very interesting thing that's come out is Hillary Clinton has now said they're going to give $45 million to the Syrian rebels who also are 
Al-Qaeda or Al-Qaeda related. Um, so now, it went so bad in Libya, even though it was the video's fault, for two weeks we've been told that, now it's come out that it wasn't the video's fault, it's pretty much it was a pre-planned attack, is what they're telling us now, um, on our ambassador and our SEALs, who were over there trying to collect weapons from Al-Qaeda, that we gave them, um, while all this is going on, and while the cover-up is still fresh in everyone's mind, Hillary Clinton comes out and under the radar just suggests we are going to give $45 million in aid to Syrian rebels, Al-Qaeda. So they're going to do it again. They're going to arm more Al-Qaeda to overthrow another government. Even though the last time went so bad, it was such a disaster, foreign relations-wise, uh, they destabilized, though, we can't even keep an embassy there in Libya anymore. Went so bad, they're going to do it again. And that, my friend, is the cover-up. Not only do they not want American citizens to know that they were supplying rebels with, uh, with they were supplying Al-Qaeda with weapons, they don't want the public to know they're going to do it again. They already have it in the works to do it, to follow the model all over again in Syria. That is why the big cover-up. Because if the public realized that what we done in Libya was supplied Al-Qaeda with weapons to overthrow Gaddafi and then it went so badly for us, do you really think that the public would be behind another war where we're going to supply Al-Qaeda with weapons again, this time to overthrow Syria? Which, by the way, Libya and Syria, if that government goes, do you really think that it makes America any safer at the end of the day? Are we under a direct threat from Syria or Libya? That's the big cover-up. They don't want America to catch on. <sighs> That's all I have to say. I'm going to be doing another video. Uh, expanding on my last video where I said, Warning! Free speech is under attack! And uh, it looks like the MSM starting to come around. And they have realized that what I was saying was true. Because in the last couple of days, CNN... And a few other MSM outlets have actually came out with stories saying, you know, freedom of speech is under attack. Now, don't get me wrong. The reason they're doing it is different than the reason I did it. I will go into that in a different video. This video has been long enough. Please like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, share this video because this is the truth that you're not going to get anywhere else. Well, you may get it a few different places on the web. You know, alternative media. And believe me, a guy in a happy face mask has no reason to be doing alternative media stuff. But when the truth just isn't getting out there fast enough, we all have to do our part. And I'm just doing my little part in my little corner of the world to expose the truth to the people. And uh, one other thing real quick I wanted to mention. CNN supposedly found the Ambassador's Journal. I want everyone to know that that's probably not what happened. Uh, CNN may have found the journal, but I believe they were meant to find the journal. I would say what happened is Ambassador Stevens gave his journal to someone like, hey, look, make sure the media gets this in case anything happens to me because I've told the State Department I went out of here. They have a hit on me. Al-Qaeda has a hit on me, and I want to get the hell out of here because they're going to kill me, and if I end up dead, I want you to have my journal. Give it to the media. That way the media can expose what happened here. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened with the journal and CNN and the media and CNN running stories without the State Department basically putting their seal of approval on it and embarrass the government and the State Department. Um, but basically, yeah, that wasn't an accident. Don't think, don't think for a second that basically CNN stumbled on his journal. I really don't believe that. I think what happened there is Ambassador Stevens, being the spook-minded individual that he probably was, probably gave that journal to someone in case anything happened to him. That way the truth would get out. Very sad. Very sad. Everything that's going on in our government, very sad. So I got to say, I hope you watched the whole video. Share it, like it, lawless out. Yeah, get rid of the teleprompter. Let me, let me do it from the heart. All right, uh, drop the beat. Uh, here we go. Uh, Benji Netanyahu, I ain't got time for you. Uh, can't you see? I got to do an interview. I've got Leno, a Letterman, a Jay-Z, too. I even got to do that stupid show, The View. Uh, leave me alone and stop calling me. Uh, what's all this talk about War War Three? Call me back when this election is through, because that's when I'll be a little more flexible, too. I think, it, I think I'm really uh, represented there, uh, Michelle.
Yeah, I'm really representing Chicago in that one. But, but, but I'm missing something. Uh, you, you know what it is. Uh, I really need to sing from the heart.